ਸਰ ਨਾਲ ਬੀਸੀ ਦੇ ਮਿਨਿਸਟਰ ਆਫ ਟਰਾਂਸਪੋਰਟੇਸ਼ਨ ਰੌਬ ਫਲੈਮਿੰਗ ਜੀ ਸ਼ਾਮਲ ਹੋ ਰਹੇ ਨੇ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦਾ ਸਵਾਗਤ ਕਰਦੇ ਹਾਂ ਮਿਨਿਸਟਰ ਫਲੈਮਿੰਗ ਅ ਵੈਰੀ ਗੁੱਡ ਮਾਰਨਿੰਗ ਟੂ ਯੂ ਗੁੱਡ ਮਾਰਨਿੰਗ ਵਿਜੇ ਨਾਈਸ ਟੂ ਬੀ ਵਿਦ ਯੂ ਔਰ ਲਾਈਕਵਾਈਜ਼ ਥੈਂਕ ਯੂ ਗੁੱਡ ਟੂ ਹੈਵ ਯੂ ਫਰਸਟ ਆਫ ਆਲ ਇਟਸ ਇਟਸ ਕੁਆਇਟ ਅ ਰਿਮਾਰਕੇਬਲ ਪ੍ਰੋਗਰੈਸ ਦੈਟ ਦੀ ਕੋਕਾਹਾਲਾ ਹੈਜ਼ ਬੀਨ ਓਪਨ ਟੁਡੇ ਫੋਰ ਦੀ ਫੋਰ ਦੀ ਟ੍ਰੈਫਿਕ ਫੋਰ ਰੈਗੂਲਰ ਟ੍ਰੈਫਿਕ ਥਿਸ ਵਾਜ਼ ਨਾਟ ਐਕਸਪੈਕਟਡ ਬੈਕ ਇਨ ਨਵੰਬਰ ਸੋ a uh, a good yeah. you know thumbs up and kudos to the crew crew members who work day day in and night out i couldn't be more uh, pleasantly surprised and i think all british colonies are impressed with the road work uh, that was done to restore the kokahala and other highways that were knocked out in the november storms um on the kokahala specifically we had about 300 women and men mm-hmm. working there around the clock as you know uh to get it open December 20th for the commercial trucking industry and that was a game changer just in terms of getting store shelves stocked and getting the economy really moving mm-hmm. in terms of the back- backlog that we had at the port and um you know really bringing christmas uh, uh to families and communities around BC and I think that's why they worked so hard and so fast was mm-hmm. they really wanted to do something on behalf of all British Columbians so yeah we have we have incredibly skilled workers engineers construction companies they all wanted to be a part of it they were part of it and and those having those temporary repairs in place is is, is good news and as you said today um people who want to visit the interior or come to the lower mainland from the interior can use that highway mm-hmm. and um and it's it's much sooner than we expected which is which is just fantastic but this year mm-hmm. um the hard work the the permanent repair work is is also something that my mind is 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 cast towards and uh, and that's not going to be easy and, that, and do we have a timeline for that minister well we're hoping um to start construction on highway 8 in the Fraser Canyon highway 1 Fraser Canyon as well in the number 5 um early spring as soon as things start thawing out a little bit um what we did at the end of last year um November and December is uh, we pre-qualified dozens and dozens and dozens of construction firms that mm-hmm. are re- ready willing and able to bid on components of the build back better as we call it um rebuild of our damaged infrastructure so we're in good shape right now everybody is uh, sharpening their pencils coming up with ideas mm-hmm. and preparing for uh, contracts to be awarded and work to begin and for the money that has been spent so far like you said yesterday it's between 170 million to 220 million and about 50 to 55 million of that has gone to the kokohala alone uh the federal government also promised uh some money so, uh, i think about 5 billion dollars to the province now how much of that money would go towards the rebuilding of highways uh as as time goes on well hopefully as much as we need um that sounded like a good number and i was very pleased and i continue to be pleased with the federal government's um support for british columbia mm-hmm. you know they've been excellent their their ministers have been out here uh, the minister of transportation Omar Al-Gabra has been out here I've spoken with the minister of infrastructure many times in Ottawa and uh, you know I I I think you've had their minister of agriculture on your program so mm-hmm. they've they've been good they've been alive very present very supportive um but that money has to be stretched in many directions don't forget mm-hmm. the damage um in Merritt and Princeton you know we're talking about infrastructure not highways but drinking water, wastewater treatment facilities. Um the college, uh, the community college in Merritt was underwater. There's some damage to schools and then of course people who lost their homes entirely mm-hmm. and uh, and that's not even talking about Abbotsford and the farmers there who uh, have sustained uh, very heavy losses. So it gets spent quickly is the point I'm trying to make. Mm-hmm. Uh but I think I think we have sufficient funds to uh, make sure that uh in partnership with uh, Ottawa uh, mm-hmm. we can get our infrastructure built back better than it ever was. Uh minister I have some other issues that I also want to discuss with you but staying on the topic of building back the damaged highways all the money that will be spent on uh, reconstruction and rebuilding of the highways which were damaged by the floods could that impact other infrastructure projects could the funding be diverted from other projects to this so essentially could that uh, could that mean that the the replacement of the of the messy tunnel could could take longer now no not at all um those are different pro- different types of projects in different mm-hmm. parts of the province um you know as a matter of fact uh in the undamaged parts of highway 1 up in um kicking horse canyon uh we never stopped working through those storm events so mm-hmm. 
projects that are underway are are, are still uh, in active construction. In, in active construction that includes you know the Broadway subway line in Vancouver. So we're making really good progress on the current projects, and there are no delays or changes to um, the projects that are scheduled to begin. So we mm-hmm. have a number of them that uh, that are beginning, including some of the pre works by the way, on um, on the Massey Tunnel, as you mentioned. Mm-hmm. Minister, drivers have been reaching out to us. They are listeners. And, and even before you came on air, we were just talking about the situation of uh, uh, snow removal and cleaning of the icy road conditions on the Coquihalla. And this has been, and this seems to be a topic, you know, you and I have talked about this in the past as well. And it seems that every year we loop back to the same problem. And this year, a lot of the drivers from other areas of the province have been reaching out. They've been sending pictures, videos of the conditions on the road. And the complaint still remains what it has been year after year after year, that the road maintenance contractors, they just wait far too long before they start de-icing the roads. This, they, they wait for the snow accumulation to happen and drivers are forced to chain up uh, before they head towards that area. And chaining up is not that easy in, in a sub-zero temperatures, whereas the, clean, the cleaning of the roads could mitigate a lot of those problems, a lot of those risks, uh, if it is done properly. So uh, a lot of our listeners have reached out, and I, and I know you're aware that uh, a trucking organization, WCTA, is also organizing a rally on the coming weekend. Uh, what's, your, what's your response to all those drivers who are listening right now, Minister? My response is that uh, we need their uh, eyes on the road and advice about where they're encountering problems more than ever. This is going to be a severe winter. The one we uh, talked about last year was a severe winter. I think we had 20 feet of snow at the snowshed on the Coquihalla. This one could be similar, but maybe even worse. It's hard to say at this point in time, but it is <clears throat> it is significant and severe already. So. Um, in terms of the truckers and trucking associations uh, working with us directly in the contractor about problem areas. Um, we know that the pothole season this year is going to going to start sooner. It already has, and it's going to be worse than before because um, the storm event has put so much water underneath the highway roadbed that freezes and cracks and is, is causing is causing that. We don't want to see anybody's tires blown out. We want to get those filled as quickly as possible. It's not a question of resources. Mm-hmm. Uh, we are there. Uh, we have procured supplies. We stand at the ready to fix deficiencies as we see them. Um, contractors uh, in the road maintenance sector, they battle with weather all the time. Um, they are required now, and this is just a change we made a few years ago, mm-hmm. to um, deploy before a storm front materializes. In other words, they have to be mobilized on standby before um, storms happen. They have to have um, mm-hmm. a higher standard of returning the highway to, ba- to, to bare pavement. They have to have more frequent patrols, no, no less than every 90 minutes. It used to be four hours. So, like, we've added tens of millions of dollars of resources. But, Minister, that 90-minute that, uh, patrol window, does that also apply to overnight? It's supposed to be around the clock, especially when we have weather events. So. Because just before you came on air, one of our listeners, he mentioned that, you know, he was at a stop uh, 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 close to the Coquihalla, uh, and he said that from 9 p.m. until 10 a.m. the next morning, he did not see even a single vehicle, and, and, and the road was like a sheet of ice. Well, um, those are the kinds of things that need to be reported. Look, sometimes uh, contractors uh, don't make it to where they should, and they need to be... Um, uh, told that there's a problem area or uh, an area that wasn't touched, you know, like there's a couple hundred kilometers on that stretch Mm -hmm. and um, they're not going to be able to attend to everything all the time, all at once. But the goal is that they, and and they're contractually obligated uh, to make sure that they're addressing, putting abrasives down, de-icing, it's about safety. That's why we have these road maintenance contracts in the first place. I've actually just got another message, Minister, and they, they have sent um, another picture of uh, an area close to uh, five kilometers before Hope, they say, westbound, and they said no one came for four hours. So I think this is one protocol that needs to be probably revisited and audited if the 90-minute patrols are actually taking place because given the reports from the ground, from the people who are driving those highways, they say, well, it's not happening. Well, I'm glad you say that because uh, we have um, over 900 audits annually and about 12,800 incident reports that we conduct. So um, 
this sounds like uh, photographic evidence, maybe, of, of something that could be shared mm-hmm. with our ministry district office and the road maintenance contractor that's responsible for that. Uh, for that stretch of road. Yeah, Minister, some of the uh, some of the, our listeners who have been a part of the transportation industry in the past who are now retired, they've reached out and said that when all of this was under the government control, there was a road maintenance center at Ellison Pass. Now that's been closed. That under the government's uh, supervision, when government was directly taking ca- care of road maintenance, the situation was much better. Since things have been privatized, uh, this has gone from bad to worse. So uh, do you think there is a possibility of, of bringing this back into the government fold? That's going back to 1986. Mm, mm. <laughs> it was a long, long time ago. Um, I mean, I, I can't even remember what grade in school I was in at that time, but mm-hmm. it was a long time ago. Um, and I think what we have uh, done as a, as a new government just in the last few years is said, look, the road maintenance contracts aren't sufficiently staffed. Um, they are represented by the same union that represented them in government. So um, I think uh, there are a number of checks and balances there to make sure that uh, – Workers are being kept safe. The contracts are being honestly adhered to. The government has oversight and audit control. But any time you're dealing with human systems mm-hmm. and unpredictable things like extreme weather patterns, nothing is perfect all of the time. And and that's where we have to, instead of point fingers at one another, support one another. Yeah. Because if there's something that's dangerous, we want that taken care of. And, we, and that's what the road maintenance contractors are there to do. Mm-hmm. Well, sir, we're kind of up against the clock here, but one suggestion that is coming up from multiple listeners, they say that if there is an app which makes it easier for the uh, drivers to report or reach out to the contractors, it'll make life so much easier. They say we can't go hunting for the contractor to make a complaint to them or bring it to their notice that such and such area needs attention. So if, if, such, if technology could be used and an and app could be developed, that will be really helpful for these drivers. Yes, and what I would say is drivebc.ca has um, almost everything that a driver could be looking for in terms of links and connections, so that is a good portal to use. We'll certainly review whether it could be even more direct. Um, you know, it'll be interesting if it could be connected to the phone's GPS system mm-hmm. so that you know where you are. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm, I'm not sure that what, what exactly is possible, but... I think that's one of the things that we're talking to the West Coast Trucking Association about and other mm-hmm. organizations, PC Trucking Association. I spoke with their uh, executive director this week. Um, so we're always looking for improvements uh, that would make it easy and accurate uh, in terms of reporting what truckers are seeing on the road. Because, as I said, again, the most important thing to us as a government is that truckers get home safely every night to mm-hmm. their families and loved ones and that our roads are kept in the best condition possible during during very tough weather conditions. Mm. Minister, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye now.